community of awesome what's up this is boy sagar mark welcome to the channel once again and welcome to a brand new video today i am very happy because today we are starting a new segment on this channel this segment is called in conversation with i've spoken about it in detail in the introduction video right up here you can check it out but i'll tell you a bit about it in conversation with is a segment wherein we talk with people from all walks of life but there is one condition they should have defined success in that field they should be at the epitome of success and should reflect the same we talk about entrepreneurship we talk about how to achieve success and we talk about hard work and many more <music> is a very very great personality he is author to 14 books and the 15th one is ready to launch this december he is a motivational speaker a renowned management guru he is a teacher a philosopher and what not he has been awarded the gia's london chapters global innovator award of 2019 he has received prestigious award of sardar patel international award 2018 and what not Today with us we have Mr. Radhakrishnan Pillai. Hi. Sir, it's a pleasure to have you on this same show. Same here, same. It's an thank honor, Sagar, to be part of this part of the show. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for being on this show. The whole concept of this is entrepreneurship, and yeah. you know, motivating people to do something great in life. And you are a person. He is one of the smartest people in this country that at least I know of. And I'd like you to you know share with the audience. what like what was your journey like you know how did you start i know you lost your job and that is when he specializes in the field of chanakya he has uh, done his research and most of the books out of the 14 are on the topics of chanakya and his teachings so i'd like you to share with the audience his teachings and you know first let's start with your journey and how you got into the topic of chanakya and how you did all that well thank you sagar for uh, making me part of this particular show in conversation and i'm glad to share my story and probably give some tips on how entrepreneurship and leadership is connected uh, so i've been a mumbai girl uh, did everything that uh, everybody does in a, in his life uh, studied uh, did my mba try to work in quite a few companies and uh, just to correct you i did not lose my job the company got shut down oh right right so yeah. sometimes losing a job means you are kicked out <laughs> that doesn't matter the case with me. you are between jobs as you say popularly yeah because <laughs> what had happened is that the, i used to work for a very right. interesting company right. and a very interesting person his right. name is mark maskrinus yeah right uh, if you know about him he is the person who made sachin tendulkar right. uh, the richest sportsman of his era oh. so i used to handle one of the divisions uh, the marketing side of a magazine called as cricket talk oh right unfortunately mark uh, uh, lost his life in a car accident and the company had to wind up so i came from bangalore back to mumbai and i was as you rightly pointed out in between jobs right. and that time actually the change happened a very positive change my spiritual guru swami tejo manager from chinmay vision said you know instead of looking out for a job why don't you think about creating jobs so that's where the entrepreneur in me was born almost 20 years ago right so that's where i started my spiritual tourism company called as atma darshan and to make my company better i started studying janakya right taken more than 30000 uh, tourist from different parts of the world to see the spiritual india right and and then i said okay, okay why not uh, looking at indian management model and i landed up that chanakya was a great management guru he was i studied the artha shastra i went to kerala Uh, there is a chinma international foundation where research on indology is done i studied Got that and then i came back to bombay and applied in my life and today uh, everything that i'm doing is connected to chanakya got it yeah to that so like uh, you also have this uh, institute in mumbai university you know talk, talk about that and you know how you build that yeah. and how does that work and how does it you know is helping so many students out there sure. yeah you know so should. so so quite a few things you know uh, there are many things that i do so i would put uh, all that i do in probably three different verticals right the first vertical is i'm a writer so i have written as you said you know 15 books yeah so right from corporate chanakya to chanakya niti that's my journey of 15 books and uh, many people even doubt whether he actually writes right. or does he do something uh, back of the uh, curtain that you know <laughs> make somebody else write it's not true so actually right yeah. of course i have editors and publishers yeah. who Go make ahead. my writing better yeah yeah so that's 15 books as a radha krishnan pillai as a writer 
then of course I run a couple of businesses. Uh, uh, I have a company called Asatma Darshan, right. as I told you. Then I am into consulting and training as well. The speaking, the motivation lectures that I give, I converted me into mentoring and guiding a lot of businessmen. So that's right. one thing which I do. And third one is a Mumbai University. Right. Uh, I did a lot of projects with the University of Mumbai for the last 12 years. I also completed my PhD. Uh, in fact, got a gold medal also right, for yeah. my research in some of the uh, competitions that I was sent. Right. But what is interesting is that the university identified me as a talent and actually helped me or rather asked me to set up an institution. It's called the Chanakya International Institute right. of Leadership Studies. Right. So we did a five-year major research project and became an institute and I'm so glad that we have students coming from all over the world right. to learn Chanakya and his Arthashastra. In my current batch, I have a student who comes every week from Bangalore. I have a lady who comes every week from UAE, wow. United Arab Emirates. So think about the commitment. So I think somewhere uh, long ago when I started Chanakya, it was a one-man show, probably starting a journey as a person who was inspired by Chanakya. But I'm so thankful, Sagar, that you know now we are actually inspiring a complete generation. And the academic part of it is actually helping me right. with the base of Mumbai University and the other institutions. Not only Mumbai University, I visit so many institutions. I'm part of this institution also right. now. And I, I, my biggest uh, uh, success, if I were to call it, is to reach out to youngsters. Right. Uh, and you know, I've been so fortunate to actually connect to a lot of college-going kids, school-going kids. Right. Now, that's important. There's a book of mine yeah, called exactly. Chatur Chanakya. Yeah, exactly. I've so read I, it. It's great. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, very important that I've also got into films. Right. So got into two films. One is a management film produced by Shemaru. Right. The second is a full-fledged biopic on right. Chanakya's life, uh, which has been directed. Shemaru film is the first ever management film in the world. Yes, yeah, on yeah. Chanakya, of yeah, course. Yeah. We produced it around uh, uh, almost like eight years ago. Right, right. Uh, that was not a theoretical release, but it was yeah. a movie for the classrooms. Right. So a lot of uh, success from that angle. Mm -hmm. Now it's a full-fledged biopic where I'm right. heading the research. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's Neeraj Pandey's movie, Chanakya. Wow. So 15 books. Of course, I've done many audio books also. Yeah. Then, of course, uh, uh, the films. Right. Uh, and the radio show. That the radio you're... show. So yeah. it's like a About life Chanakya. of Chanakya. Yeah. Many believe that he is Chanakya reborn himself, you know, <laughs> he reaches Chanakya, he, he's a reviving Chanakya after 2000 years, as it's rightly said. Uh, sir, I'd like to, you know, discuss the, uh, the format of the college, you yeah. know, uh, you do it in a Gurukul style, yeah, you know, yeah, tell yeah. us a bit about yeah. that, how you do that, why it is important in today's world. Sure, sure. So, it so happened that uh, I remember... Uh, I used to write for Times of India as a columnist. Right, right. And I used to write uh, every week an article and there were a lot of people who actually used to read. One day I got an email and I realized it's actually a principal of a college. All right. And that time I was nowhere connected to Mumbai University. I was saying that you have written wonderful, so why don't you come to Mumbai University? I said, Mumbai University, Baba, I am going to teach you. Once you are getting out of college, you don't want to go back and meet your professor. Right, right. And I ended up over there and I remember at Mumbai University, the Department of Philosophy, uh, the head of department at that particular time, Dr. Shubda Joshi, said, you know, I read your columns. Right. And you're doing a wonderful wow. work by giving Chanakya's Arthashastra a modern day interpretation. Wow, right. Where probably you are looking at uh, how Chanakya's ideas can be used by business leaders today. I said, wow, thank you, madam, for the respect. And then very formally, informally speaking, and saying, let's do something together. Right. And then I said, you know, I learned it in the Gurukul format, the Arthashastra. Right. I went to Kerala. My teacher did not charge me anything. So why don't we look at that model? He said, yeah, that's fantastic. But, uh, you know, university has got its own pattern. There's cost to everything. I said, okay, I'll get sponsors. Right. And it so happened that we actually uh, looked at a five years major research project. That's how the university called it. We did quite a few seminars. We had a lot of people coming in. But this five years major research project was very interesting. Where we actually took a batch of 15 boys and girls. And we taught them the Arthashastra of Kautilya, full 6,000 wow. sutras. And we put them into the political world. Wow. So we had four batches coming out, almost 50 students, and it was a win-win situation. You know, we were students who were dedicated. The only condition is that they had to stay in Mumbai University. That's the Gurukul model, even if you're from Mumbai. Oh, okay, got so, it. So uh, lodging, boarding, traveling all over India, everything yeah. is uh, free, free of free cost, of right? Yeah. And then, of course, that was one model, and the university loved it. And said, well, now let's make it a proper course. Right. That time, it was not a course. It was a certificate program. Right, got it. And we made it a proper course where we actually um, now started calling it a Masters in Leadership Science, MLS. Right. Got it. Of course, it's got charges. <laughs> right. Because, you know, so it is now you're doing yeah. a degree. And, uh, <laughs> got it. Uh, we formed an institution called the Chanakya International Institute, Institute of Leadership, Leadership Studies. Yeah. 
uh, I think one of the greatest thing which I uh, look at this particular journey is that you know what we have at the Mumbai University now will go on irrespective of whether I am there or not. So this is the beauty of institutions. Yeah. Sometimes you know when you're running a coaching class, an XYZ coaching class, the teacher is gone, maybe the closing class is gone. Right. But in the university, the biggest beauty is that you will not be there, but the course will keep happening. Right. So I'm glad that the institution has now got teachers, students. In fact, my first batch of students are actually become teachers of the second batch. Wow. So when you say Gurukul model, right. so there was many aspects to it. The first aspect of a Gurukul is that it is the knowledge for which the students come. It is the knowledge for which the teachers are there. But what is important about Gurukul, it should be an institution. Right. So we are lucky that we have an institution, the Chanakya International Institute of Leadership Studies in the Mumbai University, which is a 162-year-old university. And we are giving actual master's degree certificate. Now we are offering PhD programs. So I think that's Gurukul for me, where the teacher is there, the student is there, and more teachers are getting produced, more students are coming. And I'm glad that you know we have set a benchmark in the knowledge field. Truly is remarkable, you know, sir. You your your whole career, you have studied about Chanakya, you've written about Chanakya, you've hosted a radio show about Chanakya. So I'd like to ask you about this particular field. You know, I'd like to you know you, I'd like for you to go in detail mm -hmm. and tell us what is something you know some values and some disciplines out of Chanakya's life that we as people can you know adopt. You know, any people uh, any person can just adopt it and you know, uh, climb the ladder of success? Uh, that's one question that keeps evolving. You right. know? What can you learn from Chanakya? I also started like that. I'm saying that one, two, three, four aspects of Chanakya. Right. By the time you learn those one, two, three, four, you're saying, wow, there is so much to Chanakya. Right. So right. let me learn the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Once you learn ten things about Chanakya, it's evolved. Right. Uh, but uh, as a beginner, I would say that, you know, the uh, two, three things that you can learn from Chanakya definitely is the leadership qualities that he talks about. Right. Second is the science of thinking, which is strategy. Right. Because you need to be a strategic thinker, and that's what we call as anvikshiki. Right. And the third, definitely, is the game of power. Right. Because I'll tell you, Chanakya is connected with all the three, and most important, which people most of the time misunderstand, is his understanding of power. Right. And that's where you have to be very careful, because uh, if you look at Chanakya's life, you know, right. he was a leadership guru. Right. He was a person who was actually trying to create more leaders like Chandragupta Maurya who defeated Alexander, dethroned Dhananand, became one of the greatest emperors of India. His right. grandson Ashok went on to become very big beyond the shores right. of India. Hmm. All this because of the guidance of Chanakya. So first thing is to look at the life of Chanakya. There are so many things he has done. Uh, it's not at all uh, easy to actually dethrone an established kingdom and replace it by somebody new. Right. Think about what Chanakya would have done. Uh, it's like, you know, one of the most powerful kingdoms of Magad and the ninth king of the Nanda dynasty mm -hmm. actually being dethroned. It's like, you know, right. the phase that happened between 1942 to 1947, where actually the Britishers are ruling us and we're right. dethroning them. And actually the Indians are coming over into power right. or what we call Swarajya. But, you know, not many people understand what happened in that particular five years. We just see, you know, India got freedom. A lot of things happened. There was uh, uh, actually Lord Mountbatten. Mm. He came here. There was a quick India movement that was mm. started. Then there was transfer of power. Parallelly, the Indian constitution was getting made. Right. You know, Indian constitution did not happen after independence. Right. It was pre-independence. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Rajendra yeah. Prasad had a whole team and they were representation right. of all the princely states. Actually, we were not one nation. Right, 200 plus. We were actually places, 540 right. princely states. Yeah. Imagine merging them into one union right. of India was a challenge by itself. Then, of course, Baba Sahib Ambedkar, who was the chairperson of the drafting committee. Then there was Sardar Vallabhai Patel, yes. there was Gandhiji. And these are still the known figures. Right. There was Subhash Chandra Bose at one level. Yeah. So if you look at that period, it's quite interesting. And the more you go into it and say, okay, this is what history was created. Right. Same thing with Chanakya. Imagine an era where he's dethroning a power and you got Alexander from one side. You got a problem from within the country. The 16 kingdoms that existed in India at that particular time were not uh, united themselves. It's a very phenomenal life to learn strategy, to learn vision, to understand his documentation process. Right. So I think the first part, if you look at Chanakya, is his life itself right. and how he create leaders in that particular situation. The second and the most important part, uh, what I always believe, is to understand that Chanakya was a great teacher. Mm -hmm. 
So one is the leadership quality that he taught, but the second is basically as a teacher, he always believed in strategic thinking. Right. So I always say this, you know, leaders don't fail. Right. The strategies fail. Oh, right, yeah. Log kabhi bhi harte nahi, unki soch har jati hai. And you know, we need to have leaders who once stand up and say something, others are able to follow him. Right. So you know, here is a man or a woman for whom I want to give up my life. Right. But that man or the woman or that leader cannot be stupid. Right. You can't just announce that, chalo, jate hai, let's attack, but where? <laughs> you know, right. so that's where the second part comes in, you know, josh mein hosh mat khona. It's very, very important that we all get inspired, but when we go, uh, after two, three steps, we realize, you know, we are lost. Chanakya says, have josh, but better have hosh first. So, you know, thinking, planning, strategizing. In fact, I just read in your board right now, you know, yeah. Uh, I don't want to dream. I want to have a plan. Right. I'll repeat that. I don't want to dream. I want to have a plan. plan. And that's what Chanakya is all about. Right. See, it's okay for your plan to fail rather than having a dream which doesn't have a strategy. Right. So, it is always important that you actually plan out everything. So, I think that's strategic thinking. Now, one of the things about Chanakya which he talks about in detail is Anvik Shiki. Right. You yeah. know, when I started... Uh, Studying Chanakya or Arthashastra, when I used to say Anvik Shiki, people said, Anvik, <laughs> what, what, what? Right. And then say, Anvik Shiki. And right. today, I've actually written a book on it called right. Inside Chanakya's Chana, Mind. Yeah. Anvik Shiki and the Art of Thinking. Very popular book. Right. And uh, Anvik Shiki, Chanakya calls in Arthashastra as Prathama Vidya and right. Parama Vidya. Right. It's the first knowledge of the kings. And the ultimate. And the ultimate, ultimate knowledge. knowledge. So, it's the beginning and the end and everything in between. Yeah. So, for me... When I started realizing that we as a generation in India have lost leadership thinking, we have lost right. strategic thinking. So I think as a generation, our education system actually has become an examination system. Do you think that is because of colonization? Or... To a great extent, yeah. yes. And also, I would not blame the Britishers yeah, too much. much. Now. And they're gone. Come on. I mean, 70 years. We have not set our house in order. Yeah. I think Japan also was bombarded, right? You and... have greatly said in some of your speeches that the Britishers left to us, mm. left us and then we became the to the USA. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of my teachers used to tell yeah. that. She used to say, you know, the Britishers left us and we accepted the Americans. Americans we right. never became Indians. Right. <laughs> so I think that's where my journey is. I think uh, Indians need to understand India, not as a history. Of course, as a history, right. it's important. Not just as a geography, but as a culture and more important at as a country which understood strategic thinking. Right. And we had many leaders who right. actually were great thinkers, visionaries. That, yeah. And somewhere in the last two, three hundred years, you know, we have lost it. So I think it's very important to understand the second aspect of Chanakya of leadership thinking, strategic thinking. Right. And the third and the most important part about Chanakya, which has inspired me, is documentation. Right. You, yeah. you may do a lot of things, but if you don't document it, you are, it's gone with you. How many people in this country have done wonderful work, but nobody knows about them, even right. their own. Family members don't know them after a period of time. So I said, if Chanakya was great because he wrote a book called the Artha Shastra or the Chanakya Niti. Right. Because if we want to know the Chanakya's original thought process, we can go back and refer to those books. Right, read those, yeah. But I think that's very, very important that we understand Chanakya, maybe rewrite Chanakya. When I say rewrite Chanakya, is not saying that you know he was wrong. Right. But interpret, the, your, interpret yeah. as relevant to our generation. Got it, yeah. Because you know every generation requires it to be reinterpreted. Right. To reorganize knowledge and upgrade knowledge also. Right. So I think we are, a f we are a very lucky country to have a great culture of documented literature. The Chanakya knew this, you know, that I may be gone, but my knowledge will stay on and on and on. So I think that's why I'm very inspired that, you know, why am I writing books? Because you never know that, you know, this books will inspire people after many generations. Right. This year and last year also to be specific, we celebrated the 150th year of Mahatma Gandhi's Gandhi, birthday yeah, right. and also very recently Swami Vivekananda's birthday. Right. Yeah. But remember, all these people are documented their work. Swami right. Vivekananda wrote a lot of letters. Mahatma Gandhi wrote a book, you know, my experience yeah. with truth. So if I as a person who's never seen Mahatma Gandhi or Swami Vivekananda, at least I can read the books and get inspired. Right. Imagine Chanakya, if he had not written the book Chanakya Niti or Artha Shastra, what would have happened? He would have lost all the knowledge. So my dear friends and everybody listening over here, I would suggest that please, you know, make it a life uh, commitment to yourself to at least write one book in your lifetime. Right. And remember, this one book is not about you. It's about your experience that you'll hand over 
to the next generation. I think that inspires me about Chanakya. That inspires me to write more and more. Look at new dimensions of Chanakya, be it the art of war or the art of thinking or the art of getting rich. Or be it Chanakya Niti, Chatur Chanakya, Chanakya in daily life. How to write a book and make it a bestseller. Right, right. So I think I'm enjoying my work thoroughly as a teacher and a student of Chanakya. Awesome. And that reflects in your work, you know, when we read it, you, you kind of know that it's coming from a place who enjoys and knows yeah. a lot about it. So thank you for the books that you have written. So, so now I would like to, you know, the whole episode, the whole podcast is about entrepreneurship, yeah. you know, and yeah. how to promote it in young minds, you know, how to tell the young India to be successful, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, you uh, very popularly say that the global power now is changing yeah, yeah, to India. Yeah. So I'd like you to, you know, give some advice to all those young entrepreneurs that you're watching. Yeah. Now there's this whole like culture of startup. Everyone yeah. has their own startup yeah. they're working, which is great, I feel. But, you know, I'd like you to, but there, there come, with great power comes great responsibility, right? So there are people, you know, being suicidal. There are people getting burnt out. So I'd like you to give your advice to specifically to young entrepreneurs, you know, and who are, who want to do something of their own, who want to be successful in life, you know, uh, something out of Chanakya's life or your own advice. He himself had two, three companies, you know, one is his travel company, one is his leadership company. Then again, he's the director to uh, the CILS in Mumbai University. So, you know, out of all your experiences uh, about entrepreneurship, about, about leadership, I'd like you to share with the audience, you know, and the young audience that shop. Sure. Uh, so, f first of all, let me tell congratulations to your generation and congratulations to all the upcoming entrepreneurs. You are lucky as a generation uh, because India has come a long way from a country of survival to a country of ideation. Yeah, uh, you know, I remember uh, in my days, uh, uh, if we got an interview call letter, I'm not even telling you a job, okay? So if we used to generally have a mailbox and actual physical letter that has to come and you have been called for an interview in this particular company. Can you believe that was a matter of celebration? Right, yeah. <laughs> so among maybe 10 unemployed youth, maybe one would actually go back and say, I have an interview call letter. Right. Right, very good, congratulations. We have been applying, applying, but no replying. Right. So, so it was like a generation where we never knew apply, but no reply. Right. So imagine if you get an interview call letter, probably you are lucky among 100 people got one person actually going for an interview right. and again in that one interview there may be 20 25 people and you'll have one post so i think it was more a matter of you know job mentality was security but luckily uh, thanks to our parents who worked very hard my generation has to work a little bit less than my parents but i think by the time your generation comes you don't have to work work for survival at least right. you know? yeah. so uh, initially post independence uh, you know, the whole concept was about roti kapra makan, and now it's about bijri sadak pani. <laughs> right. So I think uh, everybody has got roti ka khane right, yeah. Today the problem is about obesity rather than <laughs> right. what to eat. So we're actually malnutrition <laughs> generation. And if you look at our photographs, everybody's like patla dubla. <laughs> Not because it is a fitness freak, but it was actually because we had nothing to eat. But from that, you know, I still remember milk right. was rationed. Right. You know, we used to actually go and eat nine milega per family, you know. And then today, Amul is producing so much that like actually doesn't export, know yeah. whether ice creams <laughs> banake beche ya kya banake. So it's a generation where roti is not a problem. Kapda, you know, we have too much kapda. Sometimes they bite in bulk and some of them we don't even wear. Wear it once and say, it acha nahi laga. I mean, come on. We had one dress which went on from first Brothers brother to the yeah. next brother to the next cousin and saying, wow, I got a new dress for Diwali. New dress for Diwali. Actually, it's my old cousin's dress, but that was a joy. And then Makan, of course, and everybody is talking about investments in real estate. Right. So, we got at least now electricity as a nation, we are electrified. Maybe there are a few glitches here and there, but one major city we've seen full yeah. electricity. Roti Kapada Makan Bijli hai, Sadak hai. Sadak is what we are trying to get straight, you know, good roads. We have it, but not the best. Money, water is another part. Now, telling back, uh, what I want to bring in is that, you know, ki this is a generation which can actually think about ideation. Right. We don't have a choice. Right. So that jo job mila lelo. Right. Yeah. Today, I'm in the board of quite a few companies. I know right. you may give a job to a youngster, but he or she may not join. Right. And and I've seen those so many, many people. Like, they don't know, nah, nahi laga. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. You decide the first day. Sometimes in my office, you know, there are youngsters who come in. Right. And first day, and they don't come. Like, what happened? I'm giving you a job. No, I, I'm still thinking about what? So that's something okay, that's a good way of looking at it, saying that they have an opportunity, but they're not sure. Right. So coming back to the opportunities, it's immense, but sometimes that's a problem. 
because you know if you have to choose between one or two or three it's fine but if you have to choose between 300 you get confused and that's where i have a problem with startups which is actually an advantage the problem is people are ideating so much they are moving on from one idea to the next idea to the next idea to the next idea right. and finally experimenting went nowhere right so you know the old story goes that you know there was this particular person who was trying to dig a well hmm. and after right. trying it for so much time there is no water coming he right. goes to a mentor and says you know pani nahi aa raha hai main kahan pe khoda hu yahan pe bhi khoda hu wahan pe bhi khoda hu wahan pe kuwa kahin pe pani nahi aa raha and my dear friends you think carefully choose one spot do your research right. and then hit one spot and go deep stay focused yeah exactly so the way i look at it is that i think it's important to ideate but right. fix up that one area then give your life to it right. it's a big commitment of course right so the way i look at it, the startup india is a fantastic thing and mm-hmm. parents are also supporting right. and with the digital and technology and literally internet being free i think you right. can do so much massive work but i think the first requirement of a business is not a business idea right Wow. Okay. <laughs> Again, I'm saying something very different. The first thing about business is not a business idea, but a mentor. Right. Who will tell you what to do and what not to do. Right. And that is what I did in my life. So when I started my business in Atma Darshan, I was not sure, but I went to my guru, Swami Tejo Manjana Singh. Is it okay? Very good. Start. But then it is not just blessings. Okay, he's doing strategically. Okay, good, good, good. I kept reporting to him. Even after twenty years, oh. I take guidance from him. Wow. In fact, I'll tell you, oh friends, in in between, I even decided to stop my company, shut down my company, wow. because you know, some I became so busy with uh, from Atma Darshan to the Chandra space that literally I decided, "Kya be ho gaya yaar?" And right. I wrote a mail to him, and he was traveling somewhere. He said, "Wait, you cannot stop this company." And today, actually, I'm looking at investors coming in. Right. Some of the, in fact, there is a company which we started uh, called Enlightened Games. Not many oh. people know about it. So actually, we have produced games on. चाणक्यूट have a idea hmm. do entrepreneurship but entrepreneurship minus mentorship is lost game wow okay. and if you have a mentor even if you are losing the game the mentor will make sure you win the game right so that's why probably i've been trying to do help out a lot of young boys and girls right. and saying that i did i'll give one specific example you know you'll right. be happy to know this right uh, and it's a specific example why am i telling that there's a young girl i remember her name is disha one of my uh friend's daughter actually okay. is a consulting person so brain once uh, says you know okay we are doing some consulting work how to build up a company right. and say like, that's my daughter oh so okay disha how are you so i didn't meet up we just chatting and she was doing a final year of engineering okay okay she had some business idea and there was one college colleague of hers and both of them were developing some app hmm. i said okay then he said okay, what's your uh, business all about hmm. she started speaking a lot of ideas she said listen i want to know your business in numbers Okay, so what you are telling me is philosophy and the idea. Right. Where is your business plan? Right. Where are your numbers? I want to see an Excel sheet and said, okay, I don't know. Hmm. Let's go prepare it, then I'll guide you. And she was so committed. This actually came back with a kacha Excel sheet, <laughs> saying that this is the expenses, this is the incoming, and said the income side, but there is nothing. Now the business is developing. That's fine. But what about the expense side? And you looked at it and saying that you are not taking any money. Oh, it's my business. That's fine. But your time is getting afforded. Your right. partner's time is going to. You have to account for it. You may not take it. Oh, and she's putting. What about your dad's uh, office space? You're using. You're looking at that's my dad's office. Exactly. Don't take it for granted. A businessman values time and money in numbers. So you can put a cost to it. Maybe you're using a small space, but remember right. that space in Mumbai is ten thousand rupees a month. Right. The workstation. If you go and work, don't they charge you? Even right. if it's a common workspace. They're looking at it. Okay, and after six months, she started seriously taking that in every moment counts. Right. Interestingly, what happened is that uh, the partner he was also ideating. She was also ideating. He said, "Chalo, me aur kuch karta hu." Okay. And then this girl also says, "You know, Desha, I am also planning to." No, now I will not allow you to stop right. your business. Continue. But my partner is not there. Well, the congratulations. Now you are the sole decision maker. Hmm. But remember one thing: whatever you started on paper, close it properly. Right. Pay him some money. Pay him some money. He never demand. He may not demand, but that's business rules. Right. He work for your company, right? 
He helped you in the initial stages. Right. So it's your moral responsibility to take the rights of the company legally on paper, right. thank him and give him some money. Because remember that figure I had put in? That your time per month, if you're working somewhere, you would have got at least a, a small fee, maybe 5,000 rupees a month. Right. She actually calculated and gave him some money and he was surprised saying that, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I'm going to commit to business. You'd be surprised. That the girl went on. Then after uh, some time, I started telling, okay, now that the expense, you're developing a very your income. He started pushing up, pushing up. She started getting big orders from, you know, a Tata group and Aditya wow. Billa group and everybody's like, you know, calling her and all those things. And that time she suddenly says, you know, I think I need to go. I, I think my biggest dream is to go abroad and study and do an MBA. I said, nothing doing. <laughs> so why? I got her advice. Nothing doing. I'm not going to allow you because a business has to mature. You only started. It's one, one and a half years. You require a business commitment for minimum three years. Right. Uh, she went back and asked her father and saying that I'm not going to go even if I'm getting in Howard. Hmm. So imagine, see how fickle the mind is that you right. say, okay, I'll go and study. There's nothing doing. And believe me, Disha actually did not go and study in Howard. She actually studied, studied, studied. And after three years, the business started zooming. She started getting employees. She's got her own team. I went wow. and asked her, hi, Disha. When are you going to Howard now? Hmm. Oh, okay. Please go now because now you have the business maturity. Right. You've gone through all the cycles. You understand numbers. You understand clients. You require the technicalities. You've developed everything. Now go and study. I said, like, okay. So she started looking and saying, okay, the course that I want to do is actually in LSC, London School right. of Economics. Right. She applied and she comes and tells me, okay, then, you know, this is the particular uh, place. And right. then I said, congratulations. But you'd be surprised in the history of LSC of that particular course. Wow. She's the youngest to get appointed. She's wow. 25 now. And all our colleagues are 45 years and above. Wow. And Disha comes and tells me, saying that, you know, why they selected me, I also don't know. <laughs> then I said, because... You have a portfolio. You have a portfolio okay. of running a business for three years. You want, you started maybe when you're 18 or 19. Right. You have built up your portfolio at 21, 22, 23. You've actually done a successful business model with numbers. Right. And she says, wow. And the best part about that course, is that it's a two-year program, that she goes for uh, two or three weeks, comes back, Wow. Applies in a business. God. Then again goes back. Now think about the world standards that Disha will take a company to. She's in India learning world class. And believe me, I remember the discussion she had with me and Birin, her father having with me and saying that, okay, should we take London School of Economics or ISB or IIM? You know, by that time, she was very clear that education is for the leadership level, business leadership level. I specifically told her, Look at the pluses and minuses. Right. I believe that you should look at LSC because of many other reasons. See, ISB is also good. IIM is also good, but you know, they're still Indian. If right. you want to take a company to world class, okay? No, learn world class. Learn world class. And let me tell you, she did a further research. Okay, LSC is actually 200 year old institute. Right. And think about it. Britishers actually rule the nation. Not only our nation, but many nations across the world using strategies. And actually all the inputs came from LSC strategist. Oh. And we will know. So think about it. Go to Britain, learn the techniques and come back and apply in our country. Wow, yeah. And she's now here. You know, I just spoke to her yesterday and saying that, you know, I'm going to share. I said, not share, but you teach me now what I don't know about global leadership. Right. Coming back short, my dear friends, please, please, please work on entrepreneurship. I want each one of you to be job providers. Right but not job seekers. Right. And even if you want to work, it's not wrong, you know, but work with an entrepreneurship mindset. Right. But who's your mentor? Right. Who's your guide? Because the problem is that if you go to your friends, it's like blind leading the blind. Right. He right. or she's equally confused. So are you. Right. And then after three years, you don't know what to do. And that's where exactly depression comes in. Suicidal tendencies comes in. Because you're only looking at, you know, failure models. You may have a Steve Jobs as your icon, but the reality is that there is a process of becoming a Steve right. Jobs. So my dear friends, my whole idea of what is that please, 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 please take entrepreneurship as a leadership commitment minimum for three years. Right. And but don't do it alone. And have a guru, a have a mentor, have a, I don't know what strategist. Right. And he or she, whoever is a mentor guru, has to be part of the game plan. Right. Sachin Tendulkar may hit sixes and centuries, but there is a Ramakans Atsarekar telling right. him what to do. Right. There is a Chandragupta Maurya, but there is a Chanakya behind it. Right. So make sure you have your Chanakya before you actually play the game, the battle of life and the battle of entrepreneurship.